how to remove facial hair or stubble in Photoshop. Hey everybody, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today I want to talk about a couple techniques that I used, actually just recently used, to uh, do a little uh, Photoshop touch-up on an image of a headshot. And in particular, I kind of want to talk about you know, the easy part, which is sort of removing blemishes and things like that. And then the more intricate part, which is getting rid of facial hair. So if I zoom in here, you'll see there was a little bit of stubble here. And you'll run into this with um, any uh, male models or uh, headshots of men, because sometimes even if like he shaved, he may have shaved earlier that morning, um, some of this can just show up and it's rather unsightly and very difficult to remove unless you use this one simple tip that I'll share with you. So the first thing I wanted to do, um, anytime you make edits like this, just make a um, copy of your of your image. So I, I hold down Control J on the background to make a, a layer out of that. So I have two of these. If I get rid of them, you'll see. Um, and basically, I just do that so I can show comparisons. And I've always got this, should I need any of the original detail or information? You never know when you might want that, um, you, when you change your mind or something. So the easy thing uh, for getting rid of these blemishes, obviously, is going to be the heel brush. You probably used this many times before um, if you've done any of this kind of work. And you just you know get close to the object here that you're wanting to remove, and you just kind of hold down alt to get a sample of a smooth section and then click or you can click and drag um, i tend to find that if i click next to the spot and then just click once that does a really good job of filling in the space i also use a low hardness on my brush because i want the edges to be soft so that's something you might consider here under your um, your brush options is to have a low hardness um, the higher that is, the more uh, the edges around where your cursor are, um, it'll be more obvious that you that you used it, that's all. So I just kind of like to come in here and grab a couple of these points. I'm just alternating between holding Alt and selecting and clicking with my left mouse button. Very simple stuff. Um, you just kind of come in here, maybe paint a little bit on that one, get rid of a few of these blackheads if we can. Um, they're just a little unsightly. And there's some other things you can do, some like general touch-up stuff that uh, would, you know, lessen the details on these things too. But uh, I don't know that we'll talk about that today. There are so many different ways you can manipulate photos in Photoshop. It's like and there isn't really one size fits all um, a solution for this kind of stuff. It's sort of whatever you like, whatever works for the the image. Um, you know, a lot of it's personal preference, though. I, I find that I just like doing this. It's very easy to kind of click, 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 click. You know, oh, I don't like that white head. Click, click, and uh, maybe get rid of that little blemish. And this one over here and that one right here. Um, you know, stuff like that. That's looking pretty good. Um, I'll just show you the before and after. Here's kind of before. Here's after. We got most of the major uh, skin spots and blemishes. I might grab this one, too. Something like that. Okay. Now what I would do is make another layer. I'm going to I'm going to copy this layer. So again, control J to make a copy of that layer. I'll just go ahead and name this uh, heel brush so we know that that's the heel brush layer. And we're going to call this one the stone clan uh, uh, <laughs> stone <laughs> the clone stamp. Whoa. All right. Clone stamp layer because that's what I'm going to go next to is the stone clamp. <laughs> the clone stamp tool. Um, what you'll want to do here then is, again, have your hardness low, 20, maybe zero. I I'm going to do zero, but something low. Uh, go to lighten on the mode, and then a flow of 40% is probably good, somewhere around there. Now, let's just zoom in to this layer real quick. Yeah, and uh, grab this again. I accidentally left it. Um, what you'll want to do is... Select an area around the hair that that is close in color or exactly the same. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm, I'm going to select a sample area right in here and see how this goes. And then you're just going to start painting over the part that has hair and watch what happens. 
it's just removing it. The cool thing about doing it this way is that it's just going to go over the stuff that's darker than the selection that you made. So it's just covering over with detail from your from your selection. You know, I'm selecting from here. So as I'm painting, it's pulling from this selection. And it's only covering over the parts that are darker. So it just gets rid of the hair. And sometimes it creates little white hairs too. You can go back and, and do darken. Uh, excuse me, not multiply. So you can do darken and kind of do the same thing. If that becomes a major issue, a lot of times it's not so bad. And I'll just kind of leave it. Because then yeah, you start getting, you know, funkiness like this. You can always, um, you know, make this smaller or bigger. Left and right brackets do that also. You can come up here and change your size there. But I always use the left and right brackets because it's faster, you know. Speed is uh, key. So, you know, I'll come in here and kind of do some. Oh, I want to go back to lighten. Don't want to do darken. Don't want to do darken. Let's come back to lighten. And just kind of patch this up a little bit right here, you know. The tough spots are going to be when you get to the chin, and you'll see it, it just it just loses a little bit of definition when you get down into the chin areas. Um, so you know, make other samples of of color. That's too light. Let's just see if we can grab something in between some of the hairs, and you'll usually see a little bit more distortion in those areas. Um, there's just really not much you can do about that. You know, maybe leave a little bit of the chin. As I back out, you can see though the difference this is making. So you may have to do multiple layers um, to get everything right, and you may have to even do some blur effects and do some masking that way. But we'll just do the quick and easy stuff for now, and I will maybe do like some more in-depth stuff on another video, because like I said, there's just so much to go through in um, this kind of work that like it's almost impossible to make a video that, that has everything in it that you need. Um, so I'm resampling again, just like we did with um, the uh, the heel brush. You know, you're just gonna sample with the um, with Alt and then right clicking and then painting with that, so that you're painting over. And as you'll see, I don't like that color. This one is getting a little bit more of a distorted view than some of the ones we've done, but we can go back over that with darken, and it probably will fix a lot of that. So let's just see how it goes. Yeah, I don't like that. That's, that makes it look like he's got a sweaty lip. Ooh. Um, and anyway, we're, we're just kind of painting in here. Some of this is real trial and error, too. Like, if you need to back up, back up. I've, uh, I've kind of practiced with this a few times, and um, I think I've actually done a little bit better job uh, previously, but I'm, I also wasn't talking, so that makes it a little bit tougher. But, you know, you get the gist of how this works, and, and then it's just trial and error. So there's a before and after. You can see it really kind of gets fuzzy sometimes and, and looks very funky. Let's try this again. Get rid of some of these hairs. Oh, that's too much. Um, you can see you get these little remnants from time to time, though, and those don't look very good. Um, we'll see if we can go back to darken and maybe relieve some of these. So, oop, that's too much. I liked where it was. Nope, too much. Something like that, not too bad. Um, maybe darken these up a little, just to try and take some of the shine away. You can go back and forth a little. Nice thing about making it an ex an, uh, on its own layer um, is that, actually, let me just get this real quick. I don't like that, okay. Um, you can you know, set the opacity so like as it is, it's really smooth looking now, maybe a little bit fake looking, especially if you get up close. From a distance, I think I think you're looking better. See, that's you know the far out view, but up close looking a little fake. You might just back this off a little bit and let a little bit of stubble in, you know, maybe 60%. So now we're talking that. Whereas like you're gonna see a little bit of his stubble underneath, maybe a, a normal natural stubble like he did just shave that day, but but it looks better than all of these little black hairs poking out of his face. See what I'm saying? And then you would just, you know, rinse, repeat, do this whole, this whole uh, face, and you're gonna have a little bit harder time on the sides. You have to really be careful with your sampling. Sample often. Re, uh, resize your brush. Go smaller if you have to in these intricate areas. 
Um, just try it and see. But the, the more, you know, if it's like this big area here is all pretty much the same color, you can probably do a bigger brush there, you know, a little bit tighter for this area and so forth. Um, but that's the gist of how you get that done. And I think it just, it does wonders. I, I just learned to use this tool not too long ago in this way. And I just think it does a great job of, of just hiding some of those stubble effects uh, when, a, when a male model has not shaved properly. So that's the video. Like it if you, if you liked it. Leave a comment down below. Ask me a question. I'll love to get to those. Go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification button. I think those things matter, but I don't know. YouTube does what it's going to do. And I will see you guys in the next video.